So the topic uh, what I have for today is leveraging technology for serving humanity. And I want to share my experiences and my thoughts around this topic. I believe we are at a unique intersection of humanity and technology. From artificial intelligence to robotics, technology is redefining our lives in every single sphere. Let me share an experience of mine. I lost my wife two years back. She fought cancer for a good six years. I was getting her treated in the US, and that was with the hope that US being technologically and scientifically most advanced, I'll be able to cure her. I could not save her. I pondered then, and even today, that we have chemical weapons which can kill millions of people in a single stroke. We don't have a chemical which can kill cancer. There is need to have a paradigm shift. And we humans certainly need to prioritize sustenance over dominance. No doubt we are in a technological driven era, which is defining every aspect of our life, be it business, be it education, be it our homes, uh, be it innovation, be it training. However, in the process, we should not be losing characteristic of humans and humanity. I believe many a times I feel that technology is turning out to be a double-edged sword while it is creating huge opportunities, uh, I also think that it has become a source of conflicting information, which is creating endless desires, endless choices, and hence there is a craving of instant gratification. Let me share some examples uh, on this point. One is, if you go to the internet, you can see advantages of alcohol, you can see advantages of smoking, you can see advantages of drugs. Likewise, there have been cases, I'm, I'm going to talk about myself. If there is any ailment, any problem, you tend to go to the internet, self-medicate yourself. I believe cases of self-medication have gone up significantly in the last few years. And quite a few of us, I think, would have become self-proclaimed doctors. This is not a good sign at all. This can be very, very dangerous. If technology is the only source of information and guidance, I think we are leading into a very dangerous future. And that's why I keep saying that let technology not own us, let us own technology. This makes me think that information which is available in the public domain needs to be very wisely used. And the fact that learning from ancestors and parents their experience can bring the desired wisdom and balance in our life. I'll share another experience of mine. When I graduated from engineering way back in 89, I immediately joined my family business. On the day first, when I was to go to office with my father over the breakfast table, he asked me the question, what is the purpose of joining the business? My response was to make money. His question was, his next question was, money for what? And I said, money for satisfaction and to be happy. And I remember my father's advice then. He categorically said two things. A, money has to be byproduct of right work and hard work. And B, let money be always your slave, never be slave to money. He said that it is important to earn money. It is equally important to earn it by the right means. He also said that it's a responsibility of every businessman to create value, not only for himself, but for the entire society. He shared his many experiences and anecdotes of, of life, which got so deeply drilled into my mind that they have become a sound, solid foundation for me even today. I was recently at Harvard, just about a month back, for an executive education program. And I remember one of the professors, senior most professors, saying, that it is important, to, important for any business, business to earn decent money decently. And that's very important, decent money decently. Uh, another example I would like to share, now after 25 years, my son graduated from the US. Unlike me, he wanted to do internship, he wanted to take up a job before getting into business. So before he left for his internship, I thought of asking him the same question what my father had put to me 25 years back. And I asked him what's his purpose of getting into business. He said, for, for seeking success, 
and for making more money. I was very surprised to hear almost the same answer what I gave to my father 25 years back. And at that point, I thought, I wish I had recorded what my father had shared with me, his anecdotes and experiences, which I would have happily shared with my son. I think the luxury of constant guidance from family elders is missing in these times because many a times children, the youngsters, they move out of parental homes to seek success. And evidently it's not their fault. It is, I think, product of demanding times and the fact there is overwhelming information available on the net. This makes this generation a lot more responsible so that we can impart our experiences and knowledges to the next generation. And that makes me think how to leverage technology so that we can pass on the learnings from current generation to the generations to come. So one of the thoughts that came to my mind was to document our experiences which can become life lessons for future generations. And one would argue there are several such videos available on the net which preaches principles of life. Why do we need more such videos or documentation? My thought here is that while there are several such videos available on the net, what they lack is the connection. The connection between a grandfather and a grandson, likewise a mother and a daughter is bound to be a lot more stronger. I also believe that learnings from such videos can be a lot more instant and effective which comes from ancestors and the family members. Over the last few months, I'm trying to do something uh, very crazy, very different. I'm insisting on my parents, on elders in the family to share their experiences and I'm recording those anecdotes. And I intend to create a... And I intend to digitize them, create a family app so that they can be treasures for generations to come. In an era of virtual reality, just imagine the feeling of joy one could get by knowing who their ancestors were, what they looked like, and what their life experiences were. I, the very thought of this that, you know, uh, had us in this era of virtual reality, as I said, if I could see a 3D image of my great-grandfather or a great-grandmother, and listen, uh, not only them, maybe ancestors of last 200, 300 years, listen to their lifetime experiences then, gives me a feeling of delight. Many of you would have also heard about Kautalya's Shastra. This was composed somewhere in the second century, which disappeared in 12th century, and it was rediscovered sometime in the 19th century. And then in the 19th century, it was put into text before getting translated into many other languages. I'm sure you would agree that this translation, what actually happened in the second century into various languages in the 19th century, the true essence would have got impacted to a great extent. It is like me sharing my experiences, I mean, my father's experiences with my son. And that made me thought that imagine had technology existed in the second century, Today, we would have been able to hear the golden discourses of Kautalya in its original form. What a joyful experience it would have been. Likewise, we hear a lot about good karma these days. To me, good karma is all about love and positive relationships. And to me, it starts from home. It's all about family bonding. It's about respecting views of all in the family, including children, and creating an environment of transparency and trust where we can all communicate freely. That's karma for me. I practice this approach of karma not only at home, but also at my workplace, with my friends and social circles. Today we see that children are hooked onto computer games. And most of the computer games have got lot of elements of violence into it. While it is going to be unrealistic to get rid of these computer games which have got violence, we can definitely promote games to impart human values like compassion, love and forgiveness. We all would have heard about this computer game called Blue Whale. I think it's a very bad example or misuse of technology. Leveraging technology for humanity and good karma has been my focus over the last few years. 
And this, I won't hesitate in saying this has really helped me to grow holistically and establish a very positive hum human connect with people all around me. I would like to end my talk with a famous quote by a historian called Arthur Schultz Singer. And the quote says, science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frames our responses. Thank you.